Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days with today's second video. We will also have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre, which will take us, would you believe, into the start of September. So we actually go into the beginning of the autumn of 2018 uh, with the more extended output uh, at the moment. So um, it's been a very warm summer, very hot summer. We've got the uh, central temperature in now from Hadley for uh, July. Uh, 2018. Uh, so I'll bring you up to date with what's happened there uh, in a moment. We could be on course for the uh, hottest summer on record, beating 1976. It's going to be quite hard to do it, but I'll explain what we've got to do as well in a moment. This in terms of century and temperature. We haven't got the UK-wide figures in yet. They'll be in uh, either, I would have thought, tomorrow or maybe uh, Friday. So um, we'll be able to bring you up to date in terms of the UK-wide picture uh, in a day or so time. So this is all related to the uh, central England temperature, which is the longest, um, consist most consistent temperature record on Earth going back to the year of 1659. So I'll bring you up to date with all of that. We'll have a look at weather next week, 10 days. Got hotter conditions on the way. Uh, and next week could get very hot indeed. There is uncertainty about how far north this very hot weather we're going to have over southern Europe is going to get uh, next week. It potentially could turn really, really hot indeed uh, next week. Uh, and as I say, bring up date beige content as well. So a lot to pack in, quite an action packed uh, sort of video. Just say that the first video was five day forecast. Um, and that's covering the start of this hotter period coming up over the next few days into weekend to start of next week. So have a look at that, see what you think. Right, we're going to start off with the CT. So we have moved uh, CT into Gasworth Vince, of course. I explained this last week. Uh, so we now have every month's worth of CT numbers going back to the year of 1659 uh, just there. Let's go down to the current year 2000. And 18, and this is the current year just here, of course. So um, we find that the central England temperature for uh, July 2018 comes out at 19.1. 19.1 was the CT uh, number for July 2018. And it's only the fourth time ever since 1659 that we have had the CT going into uh, the 19. So it doesn't beat our hottest month on record. The hottest month on record remains 2006. This year just here, uh, July 2006, comes out at 19.7. So we haven't beat beaten our hottest uh, our hottest um, July on record, and also our hottest month on record. That remains hottest month on record. Uh, and we also fall under both uh, 1995. August 1995 came out at 19.2. So very close to that, but just coming out a little bit underneath it. And uh, we're also underneath our second hottest month. Uh, on record and our second hottest July on record, which is in 1983 at 19.5. So this turns out to be the third warmest July on record in terms of the CT. And it also turns out to be the uh, fourth warmest month on record, just, just, just falling underneath August 19. 95. Now, what I've got to do to get the hottest summer on record, so I'll just explain that. Uh, so, we find that June 2018 came out at 16.1. That was a very, very warm June. Uh, July comes out at 19.1. So, to uh, get the hottest summer on record, we need August CT to come out at 18. Uh, point two. We've got to get to 18.2 for August CT to get the hottest summer on record. If we want to equal the hottest uh, summer on record, then we would need August CT to come out at 18.1. Uh, That's quite a big ask to get uh, such a hot month following the, the hot months of June and July as well. And also May was a very hot month. Uh, so... For, the, for that period of the year. So it is quite a big ask to do that. The last time we had a uh, CT in the 18s in August was actually back in 2003. So it's quite a long time ago, uh, which came out at 18.3. Uh, there we are. 
uh, just there. So um, it's been a long time since we've had uh, August CT in the 18s. We are probably due for one. This is a hot summer anyway. So it is possible we could do it. It's going to be quite a big ask. I think it will depend how hot we get it in the first week. Of course, that's quite uncertain how hot we're going to get it through the course of next week. If we do get some of that very extreme heat coming up that they're going to have over France, Spain and Portugal, um, then we will be in with a better chance. It just depends whether we can bring that really extreme heat up. But that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, get Artist Summer on record for the CET. Uh, we've got to get to 18.2. Uh, or greater for uh, August CT. And 18.1 will uh, mean that we equalise the summer of uh, 1976. We come out on a par with it. So just have to wait and see where that goes. We're going to have Terry Scully's uh, August forecast coming up for you this evening. So that's going to be quite interesting to see what Terry is predicting for uh, August. Then the Gaz Weatherford's August forecast will be released probably uh, tomorrow. Right, so that's brought you up to date with the CT. Remember, that uh, just is for the Central England region. The UK-wide uh, temperature numbers are still to come in. Uh, they'll be arriving and we'll be able to analyse those in the next day or so. Right, let's have a look at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. Then we're at Canterbury uh, in the south of England today. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Canterbury. And uh, temperatures are on the up. So we've had this respite to the heat wave over the past couple of days. But the temperatures are now on their way back up. So it's going hot uh, once again. For the end of the week, we're seeing temperature going up to 15 Celsius at 850 HP. We do have a slight drop in the temperature over week. Can turn a little bit fresher and then we go through to next week where we could <coughs> excuse me we could go in to our hottest uh, period of the summer so again we have got uncertainty about how hot it's going to get next week we've got several ensemble members that do around the 7th 8th of august that are reaching do reach at uh, 20 degrees at 850 HPA. 20 degrees at 850 HPA in the south of England at the beginning of August after a hot and dry summer anyway is going to bring us very, very close to 100 Fahrenheit. So we're talking about near record breaking temperature levels if we get the upper air temperature to 20 degrees at 850, uh, 850 HPA. But you'll see there are still several ensemble members that are going nowhere near that hot through the course of next week. Several members that are quite a lot cooler so how hot we're going to get it is still open to question through the course of next week it will be very warm too hot uh in the next few days through to the start of next week will the hot will the heat turn extreme or will it stay just a general uk heat we've got to wait and see just beyond that we are seeing signs of quite a big drop in the temperature then as we're going through to the second week of August, that's not going to help us get a CT of 18 plus uh, there if we go quite cool in the second week of August. So it's all up for grabs really in terms of what's happening over the uh, over the next few days. Certainly the first week of August is going to be hot. It's just going to be a question of how hot it will become. And then will the second week of August become cooler and more unsettled? As far as precipitation is concerned for Canterbury, so it's mainly dry through to the weekend. Then we get some precipitation spikes coming through into the uh, middle part of next week associated with this uh, push up in the temperature heat spike and then drop so probably associated with thunderstorms uh, and then after that there are some rainfall spikes but not all that many of them that is still quite a dry ensemble chart overall temperature anomalies from the first through to the 9th of august are coming out hotter than average for the uk most parts of europe are coming out significantly hotter than average as well it really is going to be another very very warm scene across much of europe the hottest anomalies to average are actually more across sort of the central and southwestern parts of Europe now. So it is much warmer than average over Scandinavia. It is much warmer than average over the UK. But whereas earlier on in the summer, our temperature anomalies for Scandinavia and the UK were around 8 to 10 degrees above average, now we're kind of like uh, between 2 and 6 degrees above average, with those 8 to 10 degree temperature anomalies more for central and southwestern parts of uh, Europe. But do bear in mind, we are unsure 
how much of that very extreme heat that's across Spain, Portugal and France is going to get into the UK through the course of next week. Precipitation anomalies look like that. Overall, it's another drier than average week coming up. So it remains a case as we've had it all the way through the summer, uh, much warmer than average and overall much drier than average as well. So this is the GFS for Saturday. We've got high pressure in control of the weather. It's going to be a very warm uh, weekend, locally hot in the south. That high pressure sticks around the country as we go through into the start of uh, next week. This is all covered by the uh, five-day forecast. There's the upper air temperatures for Monday, and they do look very warm. We've got the 10 Celsius isotherm across England, whereas it's not as hot across Scotland. Look how hot it is uh, again down across France and through to Spain. Portugal with the 20 uh, Celsius iceberg there into Biscay and 25 Celsius iceberg coming out of Portugal going into Bay of Biscay as well. I have seen some uh, temperature forecasts for Portugal suggesting temperatures aren't going to be all that far from, our from around 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, which uh, I can't do this to Fahrenheit conversion, but it's got to be over 110 uh, Fahrenheit in parts of Portugal, absolutely roastingly hot down across Spain and Portugal this weekend and into the open part of next week. In fact, I think we could be setting the all-time uh, European temperature uh, record uh, in the next few days, so you'll be hearing quite a lot uh, about that, I would have thought. Now, we go through to the early part of next week. This is Tuesday when pressure is weakening from both the north and from the south. So the high pressure kind of like being squeezed out in towards uh, Germany and Poland. We've got low pressure up around Greenland and Iceland. We've got low pressure down to our south around Spain and Portugal. So a bit of a pincer movement is going on. Low pressure trying to come in from the northwest. This heat low is also trying to bring that very extreme heat, but also thunder uh, up from the south on Tuesday. There's the upper air temperature, so they are getting hotter into the south. We've got the 15 Celsius isotherm coming through. That's going to take temperature kind of like mid-30s Celsius, back to where we was at the back end of last week. But it's this one that's the important line. That's a 20 Celsius isotherm. That's the temperature that could get us to 100 Fahrenheit if it was to get into the south of the UK. That's Wednesday next week. So this thundery low uh, is now centred over the Bay of Biscay and it is pushing uh, northwards. And with it, that heat is also being uh, pushed northwards as well. So there's the upper air tension. You see what a closely run thing it is now with this 20 Celsius ice firm. So we've got the 15 Celsius ice firm there across sort of uh, central parts of England and Wales. There's the 20 Celsius ice firm just leaving northern France and heading up in towards the channel. That is perilously close to the extreme southeast of England. And it won't be out of question, but somewhere like Kent up towards uh, up towards London might get temperatures in the upper 30 Celsius from that kind of situation through the middle part of uh, next week. Uh, then go through to Thursday next week, and that thundery low with its uh, extreme heat being pushed out uh, back to the southeast of the country. This ridge extends in from off the Atlantic. Upper air temperature still looking very hot just over the other side of the channel. But eventually, through the course of next week, it does start to cool down as the wind turns into the northwest. We start to drag the air back in from off the Atlantic. And so there's the upper air temperatures by day 10, Saturday the 11th of August. It has turned quite a lot cooler. That extreme heat is being moved out uh, into kind of like the eastern central part of Europe as this cooler air begins to come in from off the Atlantic. But for a time through the middle part of next week, this runner for GFS anyway, is getting very, very close to pulling up some really quite extreme heat. Through the uh, more extended range, it actually turns rather unsettled and cool through this second week of uh, August. This takes us up to the 15th of August. Uh, actually, can go a little bit beyond that, 17th. And overall, it does look rather cooler then through the second week of the month up to the middle part of August. The winds are coming in from off the Atlantic, so it's quite a lot fresher uh, and a little bit changeable in the north, but high pressure never too far away from the south. That's certainly a cool down through the second week of August. What about the ECMWF? That's showing the ridge again, building in from off the Atlantic over the weekend. So lots of dry, fine, very warm, locally quite hot conditions over the weekend through to the start of next week. That's how we look. So very gradually, the ridge is beginning to slip a little bit to the east. 
the hot air is coming up uh, from the south. There's the upper air temperatures for Tuesday. So we've got the 15 Celsius isotherm there across the southern part of the country. That can take temperatures to below to mid 30 Celsius anyway. So it's going to be really quite hot through the early part of next week. This is being all important. 20 Celsius isotherm, all important if we want to shatter the or have a chance of shattering the uh, all time hottest temperature on record for the UK which is 18 uh, which is 38.5 set in 2003 so that's over France uh, on Tuesday through to Wednesday that's how we look with the upper air temperature so again we've got that 20 Celsius ice firm hard to make it out it's just about clipping into the extreme southeastern part of the country so it's a very close run thing but some really extreme heat is now getting dangerously close to the very far southeast of the country we are talking about to the southeast of london i don't think it's going to be a widespread sort of uh, extreme uh, record-breaking spell of heat for all of the UK. Actually, across Scotland and Northern Ireland, it does look relatively cool up there through the, by the middle of next week with the five Celsius ice firm uh, coming through from off the Atlantic. So it really is confined to a very extreme southeast that we might get this uh, really quite extreme heat through the early and middle part of next week. By the second half of next week, same idea as with GFS. We're pushing all that heat away as the wind turns into the northwest, turns cooler and fresher. There's the extreme heat being moved out into uh, Germany and the Low Countries. We're not far away from high pressure, so that's how we finish up at day 10 with high pressure building back off the Atlantic, bringing lots of dry weather. But the air is cooler and fresher, at least temporarily. And then the GM looks like that. So again, we've got that ridge close to the country over weekend. Lots of dry, fine, warm, locally hot weather for, uh, for the weekend through to uh, start of next week. That's how the upper air temperatures look by Tuesday. So again, we've got 20 Celsius ice firm just there through Biscay and France. The 15 Celsius ice firm is just there. We go into the middle part of next week. That's Wednesday. And look how close that 20 Celsius ice firm is again to the southeast. So really quite extreme heat is possibly affecting, affecting some parts of East Anglia and southeast to the rest of England and Wales being covered by the 15 Celsius ice firm, which takes temperatures to uh, low to mid 30 celsius again same idea as the other two models by thursday that extreme heat is moved out of the way as we turn the wind into the west and to the northwest and then we turn things cooler and fresher as we go up towards day 10 these are the upper air temperatures at day 10 they look much more uh, comfortable so this very extreme heat that will be affecting spain portugal and france in the next few days is now being models to get extraordinarily close to the far southeastern part of the country as it is it is going to be very hot in the next few days uh so or hot in the next few days you're going to see temperatures low 30 celsius probably rising to mid 30 celsius i would have thought through the early part of next week whether we turn things hotter than that we need to wait and see a little bit uh, longer. Finally, just uh, bring you up date with the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. So these are the 500 bit of our height anomalies. They're broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us from the 1st through to the 10th of August with above average heights centred over and to the east of the UK, below average heights around Greenland and Iceland. The jet stream is up there. So we're on the hot side of the jet stream with close ridge of high pressure. Same pattern as we've had all the way through the summer. Uh, generally coming out hot and dry in the first 10 days of August. Now, the next 10 days takes us from the 11th to the 20th of August. This is when the uh, GFS is just beginning to suggest it might turn a little bit more unsettled. The Beijing Climate Centre wants to keep this area above, of above average heights very close to the country, really. So uh, no change in particularly showing up there through that 10-day period will remain very warm, probably hot uh, and mainly dry, too. The final 10 days of August look like that. The 21st of August to the 30th shows uh, a continuation of above average heights over top of the country. The only difference is that they are beginning to weaken a little bit. We're lowering the heights to the south. We're probably also lowering the heights to the north. So it looks like this ridge is coming under quite a bit of attack both from the south and from the north probably weakening it off so maybe that final 10 days of august possibly starts to turn a little bit more unsettled 
Uh, but then we go through to the final 10 days. This is days 31 to 40. It takes us from the last day of August, the 31st, through to the 9th of September. And it's all changed because then we've got below average heights uh, out to the northwest. It looks like we're re-establishing the jet stream as well. The ridge that's been giving us this hot summer is moved away to the east. It gets pushed over to the eastern side of Europe. And so this is re-establishing the jet stream. It's bringing low pressure back in from off the Atlantic. And that would be kind of like an autumnal start to autumn, I suppose. We'd have cloud and outbreaks of rain moving in from off the Atlantic. And rather cooler temperatures as well. So uh, that's all very speculative. Uh, it looks as though if it's right, August is going to be uh, another pretty dry and hot month. And so we would be threatening the all-time hottest summer on record, I think, if the Beijing Climate Centre uh, comes off, certainly for the CT. As far as the more reliable time frame is concerned, which is the next week to 10 days, though, so the next few days are going to be very warm to hot down in the south. Um, we're going to keep it pretty dry as well through to the start of next week. And then next week, all eyes will be on how hot we can get this. Will we get very hot temperatures moving up from uh, France? Will we be threatening records and uh, uh, be having quite dangerous levels of heat through the early and middle part of next week or will we keep things more sensible and keep that 20 celsius ice firm over the other side of the channel it's now a very very closely run thing so uh you're going to need to keep watching this space see how hot it's going to get next week um and uh then the second half of next week does look pretty well models start cooling down turn fresher uh in the second half of next week Right, that's what you got today. Very think this evening we're going to have Terry Scully's August forecast. The Gavs Weather Things August forecast will be with you probably tomorrow. So uh, see you then. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.